I'm so happy to see y'all. Um, so I'm going to talk a little slower because I have a suspicion that we'll have a few more people come in in the next few minutes because it is Friday evening and we know how the I-35 corridor can be. So if anybody's coming from somewhere else, it's, we want them to not feel so stressed. Um, how's everybody doing? Good. Yeah. Ah, yeah, I was clapping. I like that. Okay. <laughs> so um, I can't tell y'all how excited Rachel and our staff are about this event. Um, this is a different... Um, subject of event that we've had before we've kind of had had events around this topic but nothing quite so deep and heavy and but also approachable and so we're thrilled at the turnout we're thrilled at y'all's response um, and so we're looking forward to doing more um, events with books that will cause deeper conversations that will inspire yeah <laughs> oh thank you um, so, but thank y'all because when we have good turnouts, that's when we know we're onto something. So we're thrilled for that. And um, I don't know if y'all know, but um, Dr. Joseph, our guest, he's not doing a book tour at very many places. This, <laughs> we're one of the few, and I can't tell you how honored we are. So thank you, thank you so much. Come on in, come on in. Okay, so we're we're gonna start the introduction. So if I don't know you or you don't know our store. Um, this is Larkin Owl Booksellers, and we opened in April of 2019, and we had a great nine months, thanks to Georgetown, yeah, and then you know what happened after that, but we're still here because of you guys, yeah, and Rachel, my partner, is back there, Misty, our other managing partner, she rounds out our little trio, and we have a wonderful staff with us here tonight, come on in and sit down, yeah, come on, it's all good, you're good. Um, so I, we have a mission statement that I read every time because we worked really hard on this um, for a long time. Uh, for those of you uh, who don't know, Georgetown has an independent bookstore that you're here in right now, Bistro and Retail Experience. It's founded by women, by 10 women actually, in the downtown area. Our commitment to a diverse and inclusive community is reflected not only by the books on our shelves, but by the voices in our store and our most valuable asset is our staff, whose knowledge, enthusiasm, and commitment to service is the biggest contributor to the success of our mission. And Larkin Owl is a bookish setting for kindred characters. So welcome kindred characters tonight. <laughs> and it's a little bit subversive, and that's okay with me. Okay, so I'm the uh, co-founder with my partners. I'm the general manager. Rachel and Misty and I run the day-to-day -day here. We're here every day, and some people say, well, we never see you. It's like because we're back there, like, writing checks and, you know, licking envelopes, that sort of thing. So just ask for us. We're usually here. Um, so, as I said, thank you for helping us get through the last couple of years. But we have a few special guests here with us tonight. I want to give a big shout out to our Courageous Conversations community, which so many of you are part of. Give yourselves a hand, you guys. So, we have partnered with you guys before, and um, this group shines a light on the dark corners of our community. They, they lift everybody up and open the doors and welcome everybody. And y'all are all shining lights to us, so thank you so, so much for all that you do and for sharing that with us. Um, we also are very um, honored to have President Laura Trombley from the S uh, Southwestern. She's the president, the first woman president of Southwestern. So, yay Southwestern. <laughs> So we're thrilled. And we have extra reserved seating up here if anybody wants to come on up and keep her company because she looks lonesome. Um, okay, so um, I want to start with our guest interviewer this evening. So Dr. Joseph Hauer is an assistant professor of history at Southwestern where he serves as faculty pre-law advisor and teaches courses on the social and political history of the modern United States. Author of eight major essays and dozens of book reviews and op-eds. He is currently completing his first book, A Revolution in Government, The Rise of Public Sector Unions in Post-War America. Thank you for agreeing to do this. Let's give him a hand. Okay, and our special author guest tonight, um, Peniel E. Joseph, is 
the, and I'm going to get all of this right because when people would ask me and I didn't have it in front of me, I got it wrong. So, is the Barbara Jordan Chair in Ethics and Political Values, Founding Director of the Center for the Study of Race and Democracy, and Associate Dean for Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion at the LBJ School of Public Affairs and Professor of History at the University of Texas at Austin. <laughs> See why I didn't get it all? <laughs> Well, that's so impressive, and I'll just, a personal aside, Barbara Jordan was a hero of mine as a child, that any time I heard her voice on TV, I would freeze whatever I was doing and go listen to her, even though I didn't understand a lot of it at seven. Um, <laughs> but whatever she said, I believed her. Um, he's the author of award-winning books on African-American history, including The Sword and the Shield and Stokely, A Life. He lives in Austin, Texas. So let's welcome our guest. tell you how that evening's going to go and then I'm going to get out of the way. Um, so they're going to have a really interesting conversation. You guys are going to get a chance to ask questions and then afterwards um, if you want to buy the book and have it signed, uh, Dr. Joseph will be here to do that for you. And I don't know, you can sign something. What do you want to sign? <laughs> we'll, we'll get Dr. Howard to sign something too. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about the book before we jump in. Um, so here are some um, reviews about the Third Reconstruction. In the Third Reconstruction, renowned historian Peniel Joseph expertly draws on his remarkable breadth of knowledge to tell a powerful and interwoven story about three watershed moments in American history. Brilliantly written and elegantly argued, this book is a gift to all Americans. It offers an honest and compelling account of how change happens. And it forces us all to consider how we might work together to win the fight for racial justice. That's Keisha, Keisha, is how you say, Keisha Blaine, co-editor of the number one New York Times bestseller, 400 Souls, and award-winning author of Until I Am Free, Fannie Lou Hamer's Enduring Message to America. And then Kirkus, who is uh, based right here in Austin, um, and to get a good review from Kirkus is something because uh, they're picky. A noted scholar of political history offers a hopeful vision of a future in which black Americans take their places as full, equal citizens of the U.S. Joseph su su successfully links episodes in the struggle for civil rights to form a continuum of injustice and resolution. So, the book, The Period of Time Between the Election of Barack Obama in 2008 through January 6, 2021, you may remember about that, the assault on the U.S. Capitol was a pivotal era in American history, defined by the turmoil of Donald Trump and MAGA's rise, a global pandemic that changed the contours of daily life and revealed just how deeply economic disparities impact black lives and the explosion of Black Lives Matter, the largest social protest movement in American history, taken together, these events mark nothing less than what Peniel E. Joseph calls our third reconstruction. We have the book for sale this evening, and as I said, he'll be around to sign it. So let's start the conversation and welcome our guests. Thank you all for uh, coming out on this Friday evening. Um, I've got a couple things I'm interested in talking about. This is always how I talk about my classes, uh, but you've all made your way out here, so I'll ask a few questions and then we'll, we'll sort of open it up for a broader conversation. Um, this isn't the order I was going to go in, but I, I suppose just so we're all on the same page, books titled The Third Reconstruction, just, so, just for the sake of our audience who um, may have been a little while since they were, were in school or perhaps you know, went to school uh, under a state-sanctioned curriculum that maybe glossed over the first and second. I wonder if you could just sort of put that in context a little bit and sort of talk about, you know, Third Reconstruction and how it relates to previous moments of... Oh, yeah, certainly. Um, thank you, Joseph, for being the interlocutor here. Thank you, um, Shelley Hayes McMahon, for making this all happen. Um, so thank you, all of you, to come, you know, for coming out here. Um, McKinney, uh, who's my partner in DEI at St. Francis School in Austin. Uh, so it's really a privilege to be here. So when we think about these periods of reconstruction, you know, I, I always tell my students, and I've been, you know, I've been interested in this period for really over 30 years, 
And this book was the first book that really gave me a chance to talk about um, the three periods of Reconstruction, um, to really talk about um, black women in very specific ways and black histories of black feminism, histories of abolition democracy in very, very specific ways. Uh, I talk about my mother in this book and it's, it's autobiograph autobiographical and, and sort of what, you know, I'm the proud son of Haitian immigrants. Um, so there's a lot here in this book. And it's interesting, Joseph, that you've got the new book coming out on public sector unions because my mother was part of SCIU 1199 um, in New York City and she was worked at Mount Sinai Hospital as a hospital worker for over 40 years and uh, I was on my first picket line on East 92nd Street in elementary school and so um, labor activism and really the multiracial nature of labor activism at its best has really been been part of my um, political education and seeing so many black um, people, but black women who are very central to that labor activism and organizing, in addition to keeping households together, was a big part of my formal education and informal education as well. So when we think about this period of reconstruction and really reconstructions that I try to talk about in the book, the first is very important because in a lot of ways we, we've, we've had a controversy in the United States, especially in the last few years around the 1619 Project. It's a book I'm teaching right now in a course, a graduate course called The Third Reconstruction. Really brilliant book, beautiful book. And it's looking at 1619 all the way to the present. And the reason why Nicole Hannah Jones and her collaborators did that in the New York Times Magazine was because 1619 is really the, one of the birthplaces of modern American democracy by way of British colonialism. So there was actually St. Augustine, Florida is the oldest town in the United States. So Spanish imperialism was actually here on what becomes the United States before British imperialism, but Virginia is so key. Virginia, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, the 13 colonies. So when you think about British colonialism, that's why we start in 1619. But when we think about the work of you really brilliant people like Annette Gordon-Reed and on Juneteenth and all these different scholars, Certainly it predates 1619, so it's important for us to understand why are people choosing these dates. So I think it's really, really important, but one of the things and interventions I try to make in the Third Reconstruction is that the United States, in so many ways, is much closer to 1865 than really at any other moment in our history, and I'll, you know, I'll tell you why. Um, when we think about the Civil War and what it does, the Civil War, and, and the, the historian Eric Farner has sort of repopularized a phrase that's really taken from Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass is the really brilliant abolitionist, journalist, former 